Hello and welcome to this AIM video on using GPS data to identify trends in your driving. Now one of the challenges that uh, I often hear from people when we talk about analyzing data is that many people who do webinars and workshops and um, any kind of analysis generally tend to use more signals and more channels than some people have by nature of the device they're using. Uh, to put that into context, here is an example of uh, some analysis that uh, I used just recently for a webinar. And you can see that on this screen, we're looking at um, pedal position, uh, which is based upon a channel coming in from driver inputs on the throttle. We've got brake pressure sensors that are on here. We've got RPM settings. And so for general analysis, this is fantastic if you've got this data, but what do you do if you've got an AIM Solo or an AIM Solo 2, where the only inputs that you have are GPS based? And so what I wanted to do today was to be able to run through how do you mimic some of this data using GPS and using GPS analysis to be able to get more insight uh, into your driving. And so first and foremost, to be able to use a sort of uh, put this into context, um, I have a setup here um, whereby this is uh, with all channels available with a few to be able to analyze. Um, down here, you can see that on the time distance, if we wanted to be able to start analyzing what's happening on this lap, we can see that at this point here, the red lap starts to slow uh, against the blue lap. If we scroll up to the top, we can see that it's because the blue lap is carrying a lot more speed through this corner. Um, and so if we went to have a look at what the driver was doing in terms of driver input, we can see that on approach to that corner, the red lap breaks uh, a lot more uh, than the blue lap. Um, the uh, blue lap manages to have consistent throttles through the corner, maintaining the speed. Uh, whereas the red lap has a huge lift. And so all of a sudden, not only there's a delta in speed, but there's also a delta in time. And that may be indicative if we look at the GPS positioning on track that the, um, the blue lap gets the car turned in, um, hits apex and has a great run through the corner out. Whereas the red car's positioning might be slightly too late on the brakes. And as a result, may not have enough road on the outside of the track to be able to make the corner. So it has to have a lift after braking a little bit more to be able to make the car actually turn. Now, for many, you'd be saying, oh, that's great and all, but I just don't have that data available to me. So if I hit the space bar, you'll notice on my user profiles, and anyone interested how to set up AIM user profiles, I'll link to a video that helps you work through how to set that up. You'll see I've created one here that says GPS only. So if I click this little arrow here, all of a sudden now we've got the same data and I'm just gonna pick um, the faster lap again in blue. So we've got consistency in terms of what's happening on track. So I'm going to hit blue there. Um, I'm going to hit the space bar to get rid of the part on the left hand side and we're going to look at the data again. But before we do, I want to be able to identify what we've got here. So recently the AIM Sports um, folks in the US have been doing webinars. And one of their guests just recently uh, was somebody called Jeremy Lucas who brought some math channels um, to the conversation that allowed people to get a better view in terms of braking analysis. It was a it was a great webinar. I'll link to it uh, in this um, in this video in, in the top right hand corner. Now, what that's given is um, an analysis of the data plus a few other signals that I was able to acquire over the years from friends at AIM that allows me to be able to see some different information from the GPS. So, a quick run through of what that is. The first is throttle on and off and brake on and off. Pretty straightforward. These are on off switches. But um, this is a math channel that normalizes for um, any friction that may come from a driver just coasting or lifting and really identifies when the car is decelerating or accelerating. And when the car is accelerating, the throttle is on. And when the car is not accelerating, uh, um, the throttle is off. Uh, and when the car is braking and so forth. And so it's an on off. A useful feature if you don't want to be able to identify where you on or off throttle at that particular point. So that's the first two that we have here. This is throttle, this is brake. The second one here is GPS inverse longitudinal G-force, which is quite a mouthful. But basically, if I hit the space bar here, I can show you that many of the analysis that many of us have done, myself included, looks at longitude and acceleration as a great indication of driver inputs. Down means braking and up means accelerating. So what Jeremy's done is he's created a math channel which I've implemented here that mimics this here or mirrors this, but inverse. So as it increases, that's braking. As it decreases, that's releasing the pedal and being able to go back to throttle. And so it's a good indication of braking 
um, performance and it's also good at being able to identify um, the transition through that break period of time without necessarily having to see all of this extra data. So I'll just turn that off for now. And then the last thing, um, again, from, from, the, uh, from the analysis uh, from Jeremy Lucas, is that we can see that we have break aggressiveness. However hard this spike is, um, identifies how hard the brake aggression or brake speed has been uh, of the vehicle. And it mimics the slope that is here. The harder the slope of the deceleration, the deeper the spike would be here. And so the harder you are on the brakes um, and the, the faster the acceleration is, um, the greater the, um, the um, uh, peak would be uh, down here. So that's what we have. Now you may be saying, well, how on earth did you get that in here? So I'm using a feature up here called Math Channels. Um, and you can see all of these new that I've got um, as part of these sessions. Instead of having a really long and lengthy video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second video for you to be able to watch with this one to be able to analyze um, and create your own uh, mathematics channels. I'll also link to a file where you can go and find all of these formulas. I myself am not particularly good at being able to write the formulas, but once they're in the system and in Race Studio Analysis, I know how to read them and be able to analyze them for potentially being able to find trends in driving. So look out for the second video that mirrors this one and will be released at the same time. Now let's go back to that original assessment that we're doing. And just to make sure that we're all on the same page, it's looking at what's happening here with this first corner. And we're seeing uh, that, uh, you know, there's this time delta, the red lap starts to distance from the blue. If we scroll up to the speed trace, we can see that's because the blue lap is taking a lot more speed through that corner. You can see that at certain points, there's over five miles an hour difference through that corner. But instead of seeing throttle and brake uh, in terms of uh, driver inputs with their feet, we can see it from the GPS unit that we can see here that as the driver approaches this particular point, the red lap holds the brake, um, the brake on for longer. You can see the blue lap has released the brake, actually applied it a little bit, but then released uh, uh, the brake that is there. Maybe um, a glitch in the GPS, maybe something that the driver's doing. But again, you can see that um, you know, there's a, a distinct scenario here where the blue lap uh, applies the brake, same force, so not really braking any differently, but at the same time um, is releasing the brake and getting the car turned in, whereas the uh, red lap is holding the brake for longer uh, in that corner. Then we've also got this other big area here, which is the throttle on or off. And you can see that the big area where we saw the driver lift on the throttle position sensor we can actually see that here with the throttle on and off. So there's a big lift that is there in that particular point. And so if we wanted to be able to analyze that a little bit more, we can then mirror the same thing here with the GPS map to be able to say, well, it may be indicative of the fact that as the cars came through this corner, this big lift here indicates that the red lap is on the outside of the track, maybe facing in a scenario whereby they don't actually have enough road to be able to make the turn. You can actually see this uh, corner here is actually a little bit more uh, acute in terms of a turn. So it actually has to lift out of the throttle to slow the car to be able to make that turn um, and manage the car through that particular corner, which is giving this initial bump of about 0.3 of a second through that corner. So um, GPS data is fantastic. This is just one of the views that we have. But if you find yourself with an AIM Solo or an AIM Solo 2 feeling um, that you don't have everything you need to be able to tell what the driver is doing. You actually have a lot more information to be able to work with. So hope you find this video useful. Look out for the second video that shows you how to be able to create those uh, math channels in the Race Studio Analysis software. Um, and um, give us a comment down below if you want to be able to um, uh, see something different or have thoughts on this video. Don't forget to subscribe uh, and keep an eye out for more videos. So thanks so much for watching.